Thank you for tuning in to Stampscaping 101. This is a scene that I've created for an article in Scrap and Stamp magazine. It's a half page um, scene using the glossy paper and dye based ink technique. In this video, I don't go into the entire composition and color application of the uh, scene just because it would have been taken so long to do. And for the article, I was doing a step by step. Um, uh, process, you know, so I was photographing a lot of different uh, steps along the way and uh, it just wasn't really suitable for uh, a video because I would have had to been, you know, stopping all the time. But one of the things that I wanted to do was I wanted to capture, you know, the, uh, the process of one of the key um, steps, you know, that goes into the creation of this scene. There's a lot of different colors laid down in the entire scene, especially when it comes to the green areas and the background hills and trees. Um, when I'm doing greens, which is a lot, you know, in scenic stamping, um, I find that if you just stick to just straight green um, hues or values, just like something like that, um, it kind of looks, um, a little bit fake to me, um, or I don't know, I, maybe it's just, it's not as realistic as I want it to be. So what I do is I end up, you know, adding in different things like pinks and browns within, you know, those, um, given areas. But what that can do is when you add in, you know, so many different colors, um, browns, various values, you know, we might be talking about, I don't know, upwards of six um, plus different values of transparent dye-based inks. Now, while the inks are transparent, one of the things that can happen during that process is the crisp form of the impressions themselves can get a little bit um, obscured and softened with the use of all those tones laid over the top, which is not a bad thing because you get the benefit of the richness of um, hue and saturation by using those different colors of inks. All right, so that being said, in these areas like up in the hills and all throughout this grassy area here um, where all those colors have been applied, I don't try to, I don't worry about the reten, you know, retention of those nice crisp forms. Okay, I want all those different colors of green to, um, you know, represent shadows, and I want a rich, deep surface of ink. But going into something like uh, these nice Sharpie paint pens, this is a white gel pen, I can go in and reintroduce a crisp form um, with the vehicle, I guess you can say, of a little dot. Okay, so there's little dots of different colors in here. Okay, now you can see, you know, at arm's distance, I don't know, you know, you might not be able to tell. Okay, but the thing is, when someone gets a card, um, having these little details like in these little areas right here can really bring an area to life now this area back here has greens and browns in it but you can see just adding in a few little dots of colored paint or ink right in those areas can kind of bring that area to life it's almost like adding uh you know these little twinkling you know uh lights back in those spaces those darker spaces in the lighter spaces, they all, they're they also there, and they can add just a little subtle shimmer into the area. Right in here, I've used um, some purple um, little dots. They might represent uh, something like wildflowers or lupin. There's oranges in here that can be poppies. But it also just creates a nice surface um, shimmer 
Here it is in greens down here. We have these little dots down here just to liven up just that little space right down here, which look fine other word, you know, otherwise. But just going in to this little area down here, okay, with some extra little detailing. Okay, like that can really bring those areas to life in terms of uh, texture, color, and sharpness. All right, and one of the things that they do too is by adding those little textures and different colors into these areas. We have foreground, midground, and background, right? What that does is it unifies the scene with the use of texture, all right? Now we've unified it somewhat by the use of color, okay? There's greens, browns, oranges, blues and pinks, okay, for sky and reflected sky in the pond. But also I have a little bit of pink in here too, you know, pink um, dye-based ink in the grass, believe it or not. You can see down here, that's a little bit of pink, and I probably used some pink up in the cabin as well. But going in, you can see some little orange dots up in there, here, there's orange over here, all right, down here. That's kind of an, another little needle and figurative needle and thread in a scene. And having all those kind of uh, universal textures and colors throughout the scene is something that unifies and makes your scene even more visually seamless. All right, so anyways, uh, what this video goes into is the application of these dots and uh, how they can really, really add um, kind of a nice element into your scenes. Personally, for my scenes, um, I feel that um, when I don't use it, um, to me, visually, I feel like I'm missing something quite often, uh, you know, when I don't have those. so. Um, they can really be nice key elements in uh, taking your step that uh, your scenes uh, that one extra step. So, anyways, I hope you enjoy the video, and uh, thanks again for tuning in. Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Stampscaping 101. This is a scene that I've just created for the magazine of Scrap and Stamp. Um, I have done the composition and I've gone through the process of coloring and adding in the white pigment ink effect to create these clouds and mist in the background. And now I'm going to do uh, one of my favorite uh, processes in terms of uh, finishing off a scene. And that's with some gel pens and paint pens uh, in various colors here. Um, paint pens come in uh, kind of a set of uh, pastel um, colors and the white gel pen is a Uniball Signo um, white colored one and uh, which one you start off with is just entirely up to you I have kind of all these colors in the scene right now in the forms of pinks and, and greens and uh, I kind of want to create a kind of a a real brilliant spring meadow in here, alive with a lot of life and uh, spring blooms, I guess you can say. Um, but before I do that, I think I'm going to start off with the white pen and uh, just to kind of go in here and add some additional textures and um, lighting, okay? So what I'm going to do is I usually start off in some of my lighter areas, meaning um, like on the tops of some of these trees right here on the leaves, I want some to kind of shimmer and sparkle in the light. So what I do is on the top surfaces of some of these forms, I'll go in and just with a few little dots, I'll start to introduce that idea 
idea of reflected light on forms to appear and build. And I start off in my lighter areas. Okay, there it is on the top forms there. I start off in my lighter areas because that kind of gives me a feel of how much light is being um, dispersed uh, throughout the scene. There's no set formula for this. It's just kind of, you have to kind of do it by eye. And it's also, you know, due to preference. But I start off in the lighter areas because these little dots of light or dots of white, they don't stand out as much in lighter areas, okay? And I kind of start off in these lighter areas to kind of uh, get a feel for it and get a little... I don't know, I guess you can say practice in before I move this into my darker areas, okay? Because in my darker areas, there's going to be a lot more contrast between the background, you know, and a little white dot than in the lighter areas, so you don't want to add too much of that, okay? Good thing about these pens, if you're adding them into kind of a glossy cardstock, they rub off really nicely. It's not going to uh, affect the scene underneath if you don't if you add too many dots or if you add one where you don't like it just I don't know I just took my finger and I just kind of buffed it right out and it comes right out but uh, that happens a lot uh, when I do this um, in some areas it just you know these little highlights stand out too much I think it's kind of visually distracting uh, once in a while but um, for the most part you know when you're adding in just kind of one dot at a time, and I'm holding this off at arm's distance. I do get a feel of how these um, textures are affecting the overall scene, okay? So it's not like uh, some sort of, uh, you know, uh, oriental calligraphy or something like that, where you're doing like these gigantic movements and uh, every stroke counts, okay? These just kind of build up over over time and there's a lot of control over it and as small as some of these little dots can be you know when you add them in kind of mass or cluster of them together these little tiny shimmery dots can really bring kind of a sense of life into the areas in which they're utilized, okay? Some of these areas down here in the grass, um, you know, it kind of looks a little bit, uh, there's some blends down there, and there's, you know, there's rich color blends, but when you add those back in there, we've really reintroduced kind of a sense of, uh, contrast in those areas, and, uh, and, and sparkle. It's the... Uh, specular light that we might see, you know, over a landscape, um, or um, if we're looking across a body of water, it's that sparkle in the, uh, and it's that shimmer that we see on the surface uh, that's reflecting back at us, and uh, remove that, and uh, we remove a lot of the, uh, the life of a, of a scene, so this is a fun way to go back and add this in. Okay, now if some of these represent um, highlights in a certain area, it could be dew, you know, reflected light on some morning dew or something like that, which would go along with the idea of this fog that's kind of creeping through the landscape right here. But if I add these and kind of change the scale of them a little bit, let's say if I add some larger ones, you know, by kind of scribbling on a a larger dot. Um, there's nothing to say that these little dots can't uh, represent um, kind of wildflowers, like white fl uh, flowers, or it could be, uh, you know, blooming uh, grass flowers, or something like that, or some pearly everlasting, or something like that in the meadow. Um, speaking of the uh, light 
on the water's surface. I can go into this little pond here and um, or kind of flooded wetlands. Add some of these little dots in here. Maybe I'll add some larger ones, kind of as I get moved closer up into the foreground. Maybe some of these are larger textures on the surface, just for some variation with this, you know, this color that I'm using. Okay. Go kind of down in here. It adds something to the surface of the water. I've added a couple streaks of, uh, you know, very pale colored alcohol pens, but this just goes back in and adds that shimmer right back on the surface and kind of introduces or reintroduces the whiteness of the page that was lost of the card. After all, we're starting off with, um, uh, you know, basically a white piece of cardstock. Adding these um, common textures over the surface of the entire scene as well. Um, what you're doing is you're introducing a common texture into the mix, into the composition. Um, similar things, colors, um, objects, a repetition of shape and form in the form of these trees over the entire scene adds continuity to a scene where we have all these separate images used. These common textures in the form of, again, imagery, but also in the form of textures using this white pen. I have it in the background, midground, and foreground here. It brings that element in the scene and gives a commonality to the different um, shapes and objects and also um, spaces um, within the uh, scene. So what we're doing is it's kind of like a little, it's a, kind of a, a needle and thread of uh, commonality throughout the scene, which brings the uh, kind of the scene together. When you're doing scenic stamping, of course, we don't want to we're, what we're trying to avoid generally, you know, in terms of the compositional aspect of scenic stamping is that we're, we don't want someone to take a look at this scene and think, oh, okay, let me see, there's, I see where you've used five stamps in here. You know, that's if they don't, you know, know the line completely. I can see that's the same hill there, but we want it to seem uh, seamless and uh, as if it's kind of like a slice of, uh, you know, a slice of nature, a slice of life. Okay. Okay, that is, I think that's good with the, put a few dots, highlights on the cabin, I guess. Okay, that's, mm, I think that's good enough for my white pen. Let's zoom in here a little bit so you can see these textures throughout here. Little sparkles throughout. Put a few more in the background, maybe. But let's try out. Um, tell you what, let's move into some of the lavender color. Maybe there's some kind of uh, purple flowers in the landscape. And what I do is I, I try not to space things out um, perfectly throughout the scene. In other words, I don't want to have like every dot. A lot of times when people start using this, and I was probably the same way, is um, we have a tendency of uh, <laughs> doing perfect spacing in terms of uh, the placement of our highlights and dots. A lot of times it's, I don't know, there's just something in us um, that wants to place each dot like a uniform distance from one another. I don't know, maybe it's from 
handwriting or something like that, but uh, what I try to do is I try to cluster um, these forms a lot, you know, just in terms of uh, uh, kind of breaking up this um, too, uh, let's see, what's the word, not symmetrical, but uh, too uniform, you know, of an application. Um, I want it to seem a little bit more random, kind of like in nature, yet, you know, in harmony, like nature, okay? So in terms of like a flower, maybe some flowers have seeded, and you know, it just depends on where, uh, you know, the wind was blowing, you know, and to what degree did those seeds disperse, maybe. Okay, I'm adding some of these in the darker areas and in the lighter areas. Okay. If you look at this um, up close, let's see if I can get this camera to focus. Okay, there we go. See these little clusters right in here. The value difference between that lavender and the background isn't too different, but you know, this is all about the details. If I held this out at arm's distance, you know, when we're looking at it like that, the details might be, you know, not so obvious, of course. You know, these are just small little dots. You can get a kind of a, an idea of the color, but it's those little details that I think can make, you know, that scene, if you give it to someone, you know, just kind of extend that feeling of the handmade aspect, it's in the details that, you know, where people can enjoy the scene and composition for what it is, you know, as a whole, but, you know, you, they can really enjoy it on another level when they look, you know, closer at something and, and uh, look at the details that have been applied that kind of read, um, you know, at, at a distance but they're just, you know, it's not quite so obvious what, what's all going, you know, everything that's going on within the scene. It just seems like a little hint of a uh, kind of color blends, you know, when you're talking about tiny little dots. All right, that is the lavender. Okay, let's see a little bit. Let's see the meadows starting to come alive a little bit. We have our peach color. And by the way, these Sharpie paint pens are water-based pens, and the size of this is extra fine. Okay, um, this one's kind of well, peach, and it's a warm tone, so I think what I'll do is some of these trees are, you know, of a similar color, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, that color to highlight some of my trees, where those trees are that color, and maybe I'll put some up in the green areas just to kind of stand out a little bit more. It's like if you've ever seen, if you've ever walked through uh, kind of an area with some fall colors and you have backlit trees, to me it's like a, you know, it makes me think of kind of like a living, you know, I'm walking through like kind of a living uh, stained glass, um, I don't know, piece of art or something like that, piece of work. So I see these like little flickering, you know, leaves of a uh, yellow and orange is uh, kind of uh, something to go for as far as the effects that I'm going for in this scene. Okay, um, adding them down into the meadow. Who knows what these are? Maybe there are some poppies or something like that. So we have pearly, everlasting lavender and poppies kind of all working in harmony. Um, 
that's uh, these three colors out here. And I see, you see these colors sometimes out in uh, nature, uh, repeated in various different areas. And I really like that combination. All right, is there, can you go overboard? I, I guess you can, that's why every now and then it's a good idea to kind of hold it up at arm's distance and take a look. See how effective those little dots were in there. I mean, otherwise this is just one kind of big swatch of tone, but you break it up with the use of these little dots in these areas and it kind of brings that area to life and adds some, uh, kind of visual interest. We have this little area in here that's kind of, oh, I don't know. Is the word boring? Maybe. Maybe in kind of uh, comparison to the rest of the scene. So just, you know, what is that? Like four or eight or so little dots in there to kind of just bring that area to life. Okay. And it's maybe something down underneath these trees. Just in general, I, I typically use um, less. I apply less dots, less highlights to areas that are darker. Because once again, the contrast between the background and that dot is pretty extreme, so it really stands out. So kind of put all you want in the lighter areas, I say. But in the darker areas, kind of watch out. See, I put a few more at where that light area is on the grass, but see as I move out here, the dots become kind of more spread out and sparsely applied. <clears throat> How about a little pink dot in here in this area? Like I said, just a few. Okay. Maybe the pink I'll apply where I've done some of the lavender, kind of pink's a lighter version of lavender, so maybe it's that same type of shimmery sparkle in that cluster of um, lavender tones. Maybe this is a wild lupin or something. Okay, so it's like pink amongst purple, and I hope the camera can kind of pick some of that up, like right in here. Okay, so anyway, that is the use of the colored dot for additional effects. It's a really fun technique and uh, I think a great way to finish off a scene. Hope you enjoyed the scene and the uh, technique and thanks for watching.